Hello and welcome to the thousand years of our reign with Christ. Okay, today I'm going to do a word study on the word reign. But before that, I'm going to go into this video and show you the error. Right, so I'm going to show you the error and then I'm going to show you the truth. Okay, so first of all, let's get into this. All right, let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Revelation, chapter 20, and this is where we read about the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. Problem number one there's nothing in Revelation 20. That says Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years it's right there in front of his face you see him looking right at it and maybe he's looking at this right here instead who knows but it says they talking about us that are saved the elect the people of God okay they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years it does not say Christ reigns a thousand years and Christ lived with them and reigned with them for a thousand years imagine that imagine okay Jesus Christ reigns with us for a thousand years we continue to reign but he stops reigning I mean that's just goofy that's not what it says man that's not what it says at all in fact when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world okay so you can see the statement here on the screen from Revelation 20 verse 4 and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years so there's not really any question of what the Bible says it mentions a thousand years, a thousand years. I think six times in this chapter yeah. it mentions... A thousand years. I don't think anybody disputes that it says a thousand years. The, the obvious thing here that I'm pointing out is it's not Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years. It's the people of God reigning with Christ during this thousand years. It mentions... A thousand years but you know how that goes you know there's always somebody who has a different take a different spin on what the Bible says so there's a lot of disagreement about this passage a lot of disagreement about this whole topic of the Millennium and you're familiar you know what that term means right Millennium Mille, a thousand so the Millennium is the 1,000 year reign of Christ on the earth that what? millennium is the 1000 millennium means a thousand years it does not mean a thousand years of jesus christ reigning okay <laughs> means right millennium mille a thousand so the millennium is the 1000 year reign of christ that's not what millennium is it's not what the bible says on the earth that's what this chapter clearly says Clearly, it's not there. It's unbelievable. I'll try to demonstrate that. But here's the thing about the kingdom age. Here's the thing about the millennium. And this is key. This is the time period where God fulfills his promises to Israel. I would argue if the millennium isn't real, like if this is just a spiritual thing, it's an allegory, like it's not actually going to happen like some people claim, that would make God into a covenant breaker. <clears throat> Think about this. He's saying that this would make God a covenant breaker. All right. Let's think about what he's saying. The promises of God is everlasting life. But according to this guy, the promise of God is a thousand years. Right? And that's what he's saying. He's going to make the argument that the thousand years comes after the return of Jesus. 
It's not there in Revelation 20. It doesn't even say Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. And those of us that are of God, we know that Jesus Christ reigns forever. Okay. You so say he's got this backwards every which way imaginable. Now let's do a little word study on the word reign. Alright, so there's 286 mentions. So we're going to be here for a couple of days going over this. Or maybe I can narrow it down to just the New Testament. So let's go here. Let's go. God reigns. The Lord 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 shall reign forever. There we go. Now does the Lord reign for a thousand years? No. Nowhere in the Bible does it say the Lord reigns a thousand years. You don't get that in Revelation 20. Let's go there real quick. It does not say the Lord reigns a thousand years. It does not say it. it. Does not say the Lord reigns a thousand years. It does not say it. It's talking about those of us that are of God. All right, and then again, of course, uh, Psalm 146 <clears throat> does not say the Lord reigns a thousand years. He reigns forever. So let's go to the New Testament here. And let's look over a few of these, talking about something else. Right here in Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he, Jesus, shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and <clears throat> of his kingdom there shall be no end. Jesus does not reign a thousand years. He reigns forever. All right, and then Luke 19 is a parable. All right, talking about his um, the how the citizens they uh, rejected the Lord, citizens being the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus. Uh, who cares? Uh, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the, sim after the similitude of Adam's transgression who was the figure of him that was to come. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in a life by one, Jesus Christ. So I want to go over that. That as sinned that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Um, let me see. Do I want to go through these and then hit on in this one here? I think so. I think so. Let's, let's do it this way here. And uh, let's see. Let not, <clears throat> excuse me, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, and him shall the Gentiles trust. Let's see. Uh, now you are full, now you are rich, you have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God you did reign, that we also might reign with you. Very interesting. Therefore he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Right, maybe I ought to do that one too. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. You think about that. We reign with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. We reign with him right now. All right, and then, of course, uh, Revelation 5, 
verse 10 and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth all right so let me point that one out here and again here's a verse here in the seventh angel sounded and there was a great voices there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever again it's not a thousand years it's forever and ever and ever and ever All right, saying we give thanks O Lord God Almighty which art and wast and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned and of course the woman which is the Roman Catholic Church is the great city the Vatican City which reigns over the kings of the earth all the way up until the end of the world Revelation 19 and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thundering saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns God reigns forever and ever and of course Revelation 40 or I'm sorry Revelation 4 and 6 Revelation 22 there shall be no night there and they need no candle neither light of the Sun for the Lord God gives them light and they shall reign forever and ever not a thousand years but forever and ever all right and you know obviously we live in a unique time period right now where we are born of God this time period is coming to an end when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world we are changed in the twinkling of an eye First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right When this happens, it's the end of the world, it's judgment day. The judgment of God is, are you saved, are you not saved? The judgment is, do you have sin or do you have no sin? If you have one sin, you're destroyed. If you have zero sin, you have everlasting life, the only way to have zero sin is if the if the blood of Jesus covers your sin it's the only way you must be born of God now let's go through these here starting with uh, Romans 5 verse 17 this is interesting here because it talks about Adam and how death reigned through Adam okay because of Adam we all die but because of Christ we all shall live right so um, death comes to an end but life is everlasting right? I'm not so sure that there's much more that I should talk about there that the reign of Adam comes to an end or the reign of death comes to an end the reign of Christ is eternal it's not a thousand years it's everlasting it's forever and ever all right so let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 25 he must reign till he has put his enemies Uh, what was that? What was I reading here? No, that's not what I'm looking for, is it? Oh, goodness. 20, 25. Apologize. Alright, so. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Alright, so let's go through this here. Then comes the okay, every man in his order, Christ the first fruits. <clears throat> okay. So this sort of uh, supports what we read here in Romans five a little bit, for since by 
man, <clears throat> excuse me, came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Right, so by Adam came death, and by Christ comes the resurrection. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Now this, I, I don't know why people can't see this, but let's compare it. Okay, so um, the first resurrection here, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the first resurrection. There is only one resurrection that takes place that takes place after Christ again let's let me do this here read this again 1 Corinthians 15 verse 23 every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming okay Hold on a second, fellas. My house is on fire. Somebody wants to call and tell me about it. Now, this resurrection, there's only one. Nobody's resurrected. Okay? Nobody has resurrected except for Jesus Christ. Even David has not ascended to heaven. He has not resurrected. You read that in Acts 2. For David has not ascended to heaven it's only Jesus Christ he's the only one all right so Jesus resurrected from the dead ascended to heaven and has promised to return to gather us to be with him this is the harvest of God like what we read about in Matthew 13 when he separates the wheat from the tares or when he comes back he's gonna separate the saved from the unsaved that's the only resurrection for us we are partakers of his res resurrection when we are born of the Spirit of God we are born of God therefore our our souls are sealed secure sanctified forever and then when he returns, we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We will put on our immortal bodies. All right, so this is a, you know, it's really simple, but, uh, you know, so many people teach these strange end-time doctrines that do not line up with the Bible. So here, back to 1 Corinthians 15, then comes the end. So, <clears throat> The coming of Christ is the end. Just like what we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. When Jesus is asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Right? When he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. This is consistent all throughout the Bible All right. when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power for he must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet I wonder if I should highlight that one too let's just start going nuts to make this stuff pretty simple the last enemy shall be destroyed is death okay so this happens at the end when death is destroyed forever and ever and this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 verse 15 and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise 
thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now from Adam came woman and from woman comes Christ. Alright so the seed of the serpent is the unsaved people and the seed of the woman is Christ and if you be Christ then you have eternal life and Jesus Christ will bruise the head of the serpent and destroy it forever and his the the serpent's head will bruise his heel all right just um, try to try to imagine that try to visualize that okay and we got many parallels all throughout the Bible until he has put all enemies under his feet again this is the same thing that we're reading in Genesis 3 it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel All right, we uh, probably a lot of examples we can go to here in case you haven't seen me do this a hundred times already and the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool right is that, is that amazing the same thing same thing that we're reading in Genesis 3 same thing that we're reading in 1 Corinthians 15 all right and then so also the, the same thing that we're reading here in Revelation 20 verse 9 and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them all visualize that God is up above our enemy is gathered at our feet fire comes down from God and devours them all all right till I make thine enemies thy footstool till he has put all enemies under his feet all right so um you know uh, uh, let's touch on this uh, and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. All right, and let's go to Revelation 1. And let's read what it says here. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Right now we are kings and priests of God. We read in Second Peter chapter 3, I think. Let's take a wild guess here. Let's take a wild guess here. Um, no, 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 no. I don't remember. I do not remember. Somewhere in the Bible it says... Oh, goodness. It's First Peter. I bet you. I bet you a nickel. I bet you, Nickel, I'm way off again. I cannot remember. Somewhere in the Bible. Yeah, I, I think I had it right the third time. Here we go. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. We are royalty, fellas. Come on. We are royalty has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. We are priests of God right now. I mean, right now, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. This chosen generation is this time period from the time of Christ to the time of his return, the thousand years. It's from the time Jesus says, the nation of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits thereof. So we are that nation of God which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. We're in this unique time period that was unlike the time before Jesus and it is unlike the time 
after the end of the world. Uh, and this is, uh, I mean, crystal clear, basic, simple stuff, but so many people are getting it wrong, it's, it's crazy. And so I'm going to keep teaching this stuff until somebody gets it right. And who knows, man, maybe people, nobody will get it right. All right. I mean, let's face it, we're living in a world that is only getting worse and worse. There, it's not going to be, oh, hey, let's check out this guy's video and everybody gets it right. No. There's not going to be a great revival. Things are just going to progressively get worse and worse and worse. And I could go over 10 Bible uh, verses that that support that as well but I better just stop right here okay In Revelation 20 if you read it it takes maybe five minutes I mean there's 15 verses all right and the first thing I want you to notice is there is no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years all right it's not there all right and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years all right and the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished and when the thousand years are finished it is the end of the world verse 11 is parallel with what we read in Matthew 24 verses 29 through 31 when in the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And you will see the sun, the sign of the Son of Man in the clouds of heaven, and with the trump of God uh, signifying the end of the world, the angels will gather together the elect. We will be gathered together up in the air to be with the Lord, and our enemy will be gathered together at our feet till I make thine enemies thy footstool and then the fire will come down from God out of heaven and devour them all it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel all right so I'm gonna stop it right there thank you for watching if you have any comments or question I really dig it Share them with me.